So I'm going to go over the 3D cursor in this one. This thing has a lot more to it than what it seems like, but we'll get started with some basics here. So the 3D cursor is usually at the world origin by default, and that's the little crosshair, right? So when we hit shift and right click, we can actually place it on surfaces. So if I orbit a little bit, you'll see whatever's underneath your mouse, when you shift right click, that's where it will be placed. Now there's a lot more we can do to this, but let's just go over some basics over here. Let's go to view, and you'll see there's a 3D cursor location and rotation over here. You can actually uh, use this to move this thing around if needed. So if you wanted to be exactly at two meters, perhaps you can do that. Rotational values we'll play with a little bit later, but you can backspace if you ever want to reset them and that'll line it up to the world again. And there is a little, a little rotation that actually uh, takes place to this thing. It's hard to see it sometimes, but there's also a scale, but I have no idea what it does. So I, I know you can change it, but I don't know exactly how it works. Anyways, so with that out of the way though, we can snap this thing to surfaces as well. So we turn on snapping. We can not only snap it to surfaces, we can absolute grid snap this to the grid. So when I um, go ahead and go to the top view, I'm gonna hit Alt while orbiting, and I can hit Shift, right click, and it's snapping to the grid now. So we can move this thing around in this manner as well, where we um, just Shift, right click, and move around in that manner, which is kind of fun. But we can also snap to say like a vertex, and Shift, right click, drag. You'll see, you can snap to different vertices if needed. We can also adopt their uh, rotation on rotation to target. Okay, you can see how that worked out. Okay, that's cool. We can do edges. And so edges, we'll use the normals. Like each um, vertex has a normal and a face has a normal. Edges don't have normals, but they combine the two vertices to create kind of a normal for it. So you can actually snap it to the edge and you can rotate to the target and you'll get this um, this 3D cursor spinning for that as well. If you don't want that behavior, just don't check that, right? Uh, but you can do face project, line rotation to target and shift right click and you'll see we can actually get this going. The only problem with this is it doesn't line up to the face. You see, it's like a little bit off. It lines up to the view at first and then when you snap it, it kind of does whatever it does. So something to think about there, but you can turn these on and off as needed. You can also do volumes perhaps if you wanted to do that, right? And play around with the other settings there. So uh, we're not going to play around with those anymore, though. We're kind of done with that. And so there's a pie menu as well for this cursor. So if you were to say um, you want the 3D cursor reset, you could shift S. And I got a little bit of a different menu because I'm using the machine tools add on with the cursor and origins pie. But if you shift S, you should be able to see something like cursor to world origin, basically. And then I'll reset it back at the center, which is nice. Uh, but you can also do two selections usually, right? So if I wanted to place it over here, Shift S to selected, something else I can do. Uh, but also you can move selections to the 3D cursor. So if you have this here and the 3D cursor is over here, you can Shift S and to do the um, selection to cursor. And you'll notice this one rotates. So the machine tools add on, when you press Shift S, if you notice and you hover over it, it's going to adopt the rotation every time unless you hold um, uh, Alt and you can do only the rotation by hitting Control. So there's a couple options there for you. You know, oftentimes just hold Alt and uh, replace it or whatever you got to do, but that's what's going on there. So it's really nice to have that person origins pie. Also, you can set the origin point this way as well as not only just an object mode, but you can do it in um, edit mode. So you can place the origin point to an edge perhaps if you needed to, which is quite good. But that's not what this video is about. So let's just keep going with this. So if you didn't notice this while we were doing uh, moving this thing around anyways, is we have options at the bottom. When we shift right click, look at all the little options that pop up down there at the bottom. So you can actually do a number of things here. So once you shift, hold, hold down, right click, whoop, let's try that again. Shift, hold down, right click and start moving. You can let go of shift now. And you can do things like hit X or Y or Z and only move in one direction or shift X. Okay. And so you can also rotate it by hitting R. So you can do numbers like that if you wanted to. Hit R twice, you get the, the other type of rotation there. Um, and so this just keeps going basically. Like there's all kinds of stuff you can do, like middle mouse click. You can use this type of transform instead uh, if you want to use that one, which is quite good. There's a snapping toggle as well, uh, basically holding control if you want to start using snapping. So snapping's off right now, but it's still using the snap settings up here. So it's snapping to the grid. Uh, so holding, holding control will do that. And then also um, you can hold shift. And it'll move smaller amounts if you wanted to, right? All right, so shift, right click, and then let go of shift and hit shift again. That's the idea. All right, that's cool and all, but what else can what else can we really do with this thing? Well, here's where it gets fun. Um, 
we could take this and say, shift right click here, shift A, create cube. And one of the things you might want to try to do is when you create something, you get this little option of line. You could do to the 3D cursor, but because it was, you know, we were looking at it when we placed that 3D cursor, it goes and it lines up to the view here when hitting shift right click. Not probably a behavior you want, but so let's just go ahead and delete this real quick. Shift right click that back into place over there. Not that it really matters, but um, this 3D cursor tool up here is a little bit different. So what ends up happening is surface project is what we're doing when we shift right click and it goes to the surface, not a big deal. The rotation doesn't line up. The orientation here is set to view, okay? But you can set it to the transform orientation or to the geometry, okay? If we set it to geometry and we left click in here, you'll see it lines up to the normal of the face. And this is quite useful because now when you wanna create a cube in this area, um, you know, you might create cube, set it to 3D cursor and it rotates exactly the way you need it. And so if you're in object mode, when you do this, and you can see I just accidentally moved it. That's one of the things I don't like about this cursor tool over here is I always accidentally use it and forget to switch back to whatever else I might be using. I'm gonna show you how to customize the uh, shift, the, uh, the shift right click here in a second. But basically um, this has an object rotation to it, right? So we go into um, item, we can see rotational values here and it's adopted some new rotational values, which is quite good. It's not perfectly aligned either, if you notice, it's a little bit off. But anyways, um, this can use a, a local transformation, basically. So when you're using global, of course, it's going to be something like this. Local, something like this. And then normals are going to be these guys here. So this is what a normal is. In edit mode, you can turn these on. So you have face normals and vertex normals. And so you can always, uh, you know, start lining things up and creating things where you need them. Aligning rotation to target, shift, right click, drag, hold control. If you don't have snap on, they'll turn it on. And so you can do things like that. So now we can create a cube and we can line it up to, let's make it a little smaller by default. And then we'll line it up to the uh, 3D cursor. Boom. Just like that. And we can go along that normal. So that's what normals are basically, right? And so we can also use the 3D cursor as a transform pivot point, right? So think of it like this. We're going to do a rotation. Here's our normal rotation. We can use that 3D cursor as a rotation as well, okay? And what you'll see is that we can go back to like maybe view here and uh, you can see we rotate that, it doesn't do nothing, right? Like it doesn't affect that unless we switch this to cursor as well, okay? So we can also use it in this manner if we absolutely needed to. I don't personally use this a whole lot, but it's something you could try doing because now we can actually rotate from that area perhaps um, and then change those axes perhaps, right? Kind of an interesting, a uh, little setup, okay? So just keep that in mind. Those are some of the things you can do with it. Now let's go ahead and jump into uh, the default settings here. Medium, global, we'll turn snapping back to that. And um, so, yeah, we're basically set back up to the default values. You'll see our object doesn't have, uh, you know, if we're not using local, it won't line up to the object basically. But anyways, so when you shift right click, you won't get that alignment behavior okay, to the surface like that, it always lines up to the view. Whereas this guy will let you line up to the surface, which is great. Okay, so what do we do about it? Here, here's what you do. Go to Edit, Preferences, okay. If you wanna change the default behavior of that, you go to Key Map, look up Cursor. And the one we're looking for is actually kind of down at the bottom, but it, it's not 3D View generic. But no, we keep going. It's 3D View. Okay, and usually this is folded up, but under 3D view, you'll get set 3D cursor. This is the shift right mouse button, right? And so in here, these are grayed out, but that's the default settings that it uses and you can modify them still. So if you change it, it won't be grayed out, but it's using view by default. So you can set it to geometry, okay? And once you set it to geometry, you can get out of there, save your preferences if needed. But every time you shift right click, it will always line up to that surface normal of that, um, that face, right? And so that can be quite useful and you can use snapping if you want uh, for other things. However, of course, machine tools, you can just place things super fast in edit mode. And if um, you're using that add-on, you don't have to necessarily snap it really anywhere. You can just kind of place it as needed. And sometimes things might get a little squirrely. I guess that's right. I thought it was wrong. Anyway, so you can do like a cylinder, align it to Align it to the 3D cursor, change the size. 
and I think you get the idea here of how useful this could be to you perhaps, right? So the 3D cursor is extremely useful. It does a lot. It's a really good one to know. So you can go ahead and uh, start making modifications and manipulations to your scene. So like, you know, I want to rotate this, change it to 3D cursor, hit R and Z. And you can see R and X, R and Y. We can use it as a pivot point instead as well, which I already kind of went over. But nonetheless, a lot more to it than most people think. So hope you enjoyed the video and I will check you out on the next one. All right, take care.